Yesterday, Google launched its Duet AI. And the first thing I, I it popped in my mind and probably in yours too is, well, now Copilot has a pretty tough competitor, but we know that this will only be true if AI actually provides value and actually does what it's sent out to do. I'm not going through the installation process of the Duet. It's actually pretty simple. You just come up here to the extensions and type in Duet AI and it's this Google Cloud right here. Then like the only thing is that you have to select a Duet AI project. But yeah, that aside, and if you guys really want like a tutorial, uh, like the uh, installation process for this, comment below that I'll be more than happy to make that for you guys. With that aside, we are going to compare in this video Duet AI, Copilot, and ChatGPT. To solve four simple codes, and like these codes, I'm gonna try my best to just not interfere enough with the code and just let them naturally try to solve it, right? I know it's a copilot, I, I know it shouldn't be, like the idea isn't that it solves the entire code alone, and I wouldn't even recommend that for any coders, but I think this is a good measure to see like how far does this go, to actually compare one another. First, we're going to start with Duet AI, and what I'm gonna ask it is, create a simple calculator in the terminal. The user will choose which operation to use and two numbers on which the operation should be applied. After that, it returns the answer and asks if the user wants to continue. No rotten libraries should be used, all types should be placed correctly. I mean, I wasn't very, very specific, but I was specific enough for it to be able to create what I actually want. We hold control and press enter for it to generate something. And there's always this issue in which it mimics like the, the, the last few chunks of code that you just sent in. And this for this next result, it just sent over more text. Let's try this again. Generating, nothing was generated. Try it again. Yeah, Google isn't. Okay, another example. I'm just gonna start coding here. Maybe he understands things and tries to create them. Ask question. Okay, now generate. All right. So this is what it generated. And the difference from Duet AI to Copilot that I haven't seen in Copilot yet is this um, squiggly line below the text that alerts us, use code with caution. Suggested code may be subject to licenses. And then it, it provides the source code for that. That's pretty interesting. But once you hover it, it just disappears. I don't know how to access that again, but yeah, let's try to run this code. I didn't even check it out to see if it is actually working. Let's just close this. It was some previous tests. TS node, simple calc. Yeah, <laughs> like expected this, this didn't work that well. So, okay, let's give these codes at least two attempts. Like this first attempt for Duet, it failed. So let's try this one more time. I would recommend to just close the, the file and open it again, then try control enter and it fails. Try again, fail, try again, generating suggestion. Nope. Let's try to place solution and generate. Okay. It generated something. Yeah. Just checking this out, like just to eliminate these squiggly lines down here. Let's just hover through this. So down here we have a problem with types. Now down here we have a problem with typings. And this is an opportunity for us to use the Duet AI chat, right? Let's just send that over. I didn't even get it, give it a context. And this is really fast. See, like it doesn't start typing things. It just sends you over the entire code and the entire response. So here's an example of how you could use these features to create a simple calculator in TypeScript. Okay, we can, okay, we can just change everything, but it just gave us the same code, apparently. Ignore citation warning. Okay, main, kid not find main. So here he was pretty, pretty dumb. He accidentally erased the main function. So let's just go back and really give this rating just to help Google out. Differently from Copilot, I can't just hover this and ask it for an explanation. So we're always going to have to come up here and just copy that. I'm having this error in my code. Yeah, it didn't really correct it. It just sent over another code, but I don't think it's correct neither. Yeah, well, because of this, Duet AI fails on our first code. Let's go to the second one. Let's go to this scraper. This scraper that it should build should simply 
use, I would presume, Puppeteer. To go over to Wikipedia and to go over to the Lions page on Wikipedia and return the first paragraph. That's all. So let's control enter and well, it's giving me something here. Okay, let's get that. Just DOM. Now scrape Wikipedia. Okay, it didn't use Puppeteer. I, I don't know what. I mean, this solution uses JSTOM, and I don't, <laughs> I really don't want to use this. So let's just force him to use Puppeteer. Use Puppeteer for this. I think that's how it's written. Okay, now he imports Puppeteer, then creates a, the strangest sync function I've ever seen in my life. Okay, this is all just really strange. Let's go up here and just make him generate everything. Right. So this is what it generated. Probably we have that error because it needs that and Yeah, I just don't feel this will work and this doesn't have any try catch like you couldn't find a potential error here Scraper TS. So yeah, we got some problems. Those problems are cannot find name document Do you need to change your target library try changing the lib compiler option to include DOM? At this point, I would just say that it failed to build a scraper too, but I mean, you can see that it, it tries, it actually tries, and I don't see it really dealing with TypeScript that well, but maybe it's because of these examples that I'm using, maybe they aren't such good examples. But now let's try a lead code problem. Could it solve a lead code problem? This problem is the palindrome problem. It's rated as a hard one over at leadcode.com. And it's basically, you are given a string of S. You can convert S to a palindrome by adding characters in front of it. Return the shortest palindrome you can find by performing this transformation. Then they go on showing an example. So we have A, 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 A. And the way we can turn this into a palindrome is just by adding another A here, right? So a palindrome is a word that you can read it the same way front to, to the end, as if you turn that word backwards, you could still read the same thing, right? And like the idea of this algorithm is just to place letters here at the beginning of that and it will become a palindrome. Okay, so the next example here just turns it into a palindrome, just placing the same letters here. And, and the general idea here is to find the lowest amount, like the shortest palindrome, right? Impossible. So that's kind of tough. And let's see how do AI goes. Okay, so it came up with this code right here. We can test it over here. And here, it just gave us some scenarios to test this. Um, let's clear out this and TS node lead code TS. Okay, this is what it returned. Let's see if it's correct. It seems to just like, it, it doesn't seem like it tried to find the shortest one. It just seems like it repeated the letters. So let's just get this example up here and place it down here. I mean, actually that's the same example. And in that example, the output is this one, which is the correct answer. And this one isn't isn't that so answered incorrectly let's give it another shot let's see if it if like building one by one it actually gives us a better result okay definitely this code is different it seems to just be going okay let's test this new code it's the second attempt of do it AI to solve this lead code problem let's clear this out ts node lead code ts yeah now it, now it correctly created that maybe Maybe creating the entire code all at once isn't a good idea. Noted. Okay, now let's test this code here over at lead code. Testing, judging, and it's correct. It's actually correct. I mean, lead code doesn't really surprise me since uh, they are they are algorithms that were solved before and pr is probably easy to find in the internet. But still, like it getting this right at, at least shows that it, it searches things correctly. Let's erase this so it doesn't interfere with when we use Copilot. Okay, and our last test is to create a chatbot. And we figured out that this could be a nice test because if it shows up the recent beta API from OpenAI, then that shows that it uses recent things, right? Like example, when I code anything in Next.js, I always have this issue in which it doesn't use the app router. It doesn't even know what app router is. And I have that problem everywhere on ChatGPT, on Copilot. I just wonder if AI, we would have this issue, but 
Like in this video, I don't pretend on testing the next JS app router, but probably throughout the week, I might make a video on first impressions of Duet AI. So hit that subscribe button if you're actually interested in seeing that. Enough talking, let's make a Duet AI create a chatbot. Okay, more comments, more comments. Let's start importing, import, hey. Okay, it, it, it's, it didn't import correctly. It, I don't remember this instantiated. Yeah, this is just, it always uses that response. And it's not even close to a chatbot. Create completion, it's, it's still using text DaVinci Hello 3, and I don't even think that exists anymore. Yeah, it's important, it's using .env. That's kind of different. I've generally seen things like this, like compile it simply returns something like this and it's just strange, but okay. I mean, it understood what I wanted and it actually used something surrounding OpenAI. So, I mean, I would believe it was trained till 2022, 2021, around that time. So let's go over to a recent code of mine in which I use the retrieval model and let's copy, I don't know, let's copy till here. I didn't open that on VS Code simply because it might get the code from the VS Code and just use it. So chatbot.py, let's test this in Python and just place create a chatbot using OpenAI latest beta API. Use retrieval model. Is it model or model? Okay, now let's just send everything here and let's let do it AI do the rest. See, it's loading down there. Let's just wait for it. Loading, loading, loading forever. I mean, let's just control enter. Okay, it created a lot of things here. Let's make it continue to create things. License unknown. Use code with caution. Suggested code may be subject to license. Okay, maybe that's even my code, but right. So this is it. I don't I don't feel like this is correct. Like my code is way bigger than this. Like it has about 40 lines bigger. So yeah, let's test that's Python. Python chatbot.py. Yeah, I have to place the OpenAI. Yeah, I forgot to place the OpenAI API key, but I've just created the .env, so let's clear that and Python chatbot.py. Use previous run. No, because we don't have a previous run. And it just stopped working. OpenAI object has no R attribute, create assistant. And I mean, I'm not going through this simply like, if I see like the difference from 130 lines of code to 90 code, I suppose it misses a lot of things there. And I just suppose there's a lot of thing missing there. And it, and it definitely didn't use the beta features because see when you look at assistance or like this response here, or even the run, I don't know if it built the run anywhere. Yeah, here, here's a run, but I don't think this run is actually precise. You always have this client beta. See, let's zoom this in. Maybe my head is in the way. Ah, it's so confusing. Okay, see like it always has client.beta.threads or something like, like this is for the run, then for the message you see client beta. And that's the way you, you, you should do it. And if, if it didn't identify that, then probably there are no or very little information and scraping or then probably there is little to no data that are as actually recent that is being used by do AI. Okay, AI was tested. Now let's test. Now let's disable this, reload, and we're going to test it with Copilot. Copilot, your AI pair programmer. I'm enabling it and now I have to make it work again. Maybe it's frustrated and maybe it's just angry with me because I've deactivated it to use the Google's Copilot. Copilot, enable completions. Okay, probably it's working now. Let's see. Control enter it's synthesizing solutions but i don't think okay i don't think it's going to return anything let's try it okay yeah it's working nice let's erase all this erase this erase this let also erase this spot right here and leave it just the way we, we were doing it with i mean we can get all that right file okay let's leave it at that and let's start over here from the simple calculator starting from the simple calculator let's control enter and wait for what it can produce like the interesting thing from copilot is that it provides many 
different suggestions. So when it gets something wrong like, like this one, like this strange mixture of comments, you could ignore it and just find a better solution. So this is kind of cheating for GitHub Copilot since it gives a lot of suggestions and suddenly it's disabled. I don't know why. Copilot in. I think I have to enable completions for TypeScript. Okay, increment. Is that it? Can I test it? Clear. CS node simple child. Okay, it wasn't so bad as do AI because it actually made something, but it didn't interact with the user. So this is just like, this is incorrect, but is it's better than do AI that just returned an error. Let's try this one more time and let's try this placing solution here. Import this. Yeah, let's go doing it one by one. And it seems like it's just gonna do the same thing. Actually, that red line import maybe works in the prompts. Okay, I think this is it. It produced the entire code. There's no strange error. But also, like, it didn't inform us that we have to be worried about any of these code and where, like, the source of which it got that code. And I really enjoy when it gives out sources. It's not Python, it's simple calc. Yes. Enter the first number. Okay, the first number would be three. The second number would be five. I want it to multiply. Okay. Do you want to continue? Yes. Um, first number, ten. Second number, nine. Let's, I don't know, let's divide. Okay. Yeah. Okay, point for a copilot. It got a point and a half, but it successfully created the calculator. Now, let's see if it could scrape a website like Wikipedia. See, now it's already suggesting we import Puppeteer. Now it gave out the function. I think this is the exact code that Dua AI created, but let's check this out by just running it. No, it's actually running, but we have some issues here and this is the perfect situation to use. GitHub Copilot's chat, Copilot's chat feature. I got this problem while running this code. So one difference here from the chat of both is that in GitHub Copilot, it kind of talks you through it. Also, it, it gives you like the reference of the code that you're using. So the reference here is scraper.ts. It takes that as, as the prompt to solve what you need to solve. So th this is this is what it returned. Let's just blindly copy that and paste it over here. Just stop that clear and ts node scraper. And let's see if it successfully, but no, it just prompt out an error saying that it failed to launch the browser's process, the browser process. Okay, let's copy that and send it one more time over to GitHub Pilot's chat to try to figure this out. Now I got this error. And it's pretty fast too, like Google just, it seems like it's faster just because it suddenly blinks out the text for you, but this works fine too. Install missing dependencies. Uh, yeah, sudo apt get. At this point, I really think it's some problems with my environment that it's not prepared to use Puppeteer. I haven't used Puppeteer in it previously, so maybe it's because of that and I'm not sure which grade to give to GitHub Copilot now. See, it, it imported Puppeteer, but I, I really think that I already had Puppeteer previously, so let's just try it one more time. That was incorrect, but trying the previous code just gets us at this place, and Puppeteer old headless deprecation warning. Yeah. Also, maybe it's just not finding the correct place, like the correct class on which to scrape that first paragraph from. And this is not really an issue with the code, but just an issue with how it perceives the structure of a Wikipedia post. Now let's see it solve a lead code problem. Let's kind of start typing in the function because then it understands what it needs to do. Okay, I suppose that's it. That's a much shorter code. Let's see if it console test. Okay, it's console logging the same exact test from up here. So let's test that out. Lead code, test node, lead code, okay. Yeah, it got it it got it right in its first try and this is actually a much smaller code than the one we had from Duet AI. I mean that was so fast it it just of course like Duet AI is free and all but Copilot is really crushing this one out. Now for the chatbot. This one I really doubt that Copilot can solve it simply because I've tried this previously and it didn't work. Because it always suggests older OpenAI calls and not the better one. And I don't even judge it. Like if it if it sees that it's better, I wouldn't even include that 
as data to feed an AI because that's not go going to, to last very long. But yeah, let's start importing. What? Why did it import read line? I think it's because it needs to be a chatbot. <laughs> okay, this is this is getting creepy. It's not suggesting like anything. Question. Okay, continue. It just froze. It's not gonna continue. Okay, I I really give up on this test. I think this test is just hard on any AI because it has to have updated information. And to try to help it, let's let's use this this code that I've previously made. So okay. Create new run, else, else what? Okay, it's loading. Okay, it gave us a lot of things. Main loop, while true. Okay, it gave, it gave us more things. And it doesn't seem like it's done yet. Like actually this might just be the same code from Duet AI, simply because it stopped here at line 90. Goodbye, it was nice to, okay, but let's execute it. Let's see if this works. Chatbot, no, it's not. Chatbot.py, use previous run, yes. And I suppose this is the same error. No, I don't think it, it is. I don't remember it having an error here at run.json, but still, let's see if it at least used client.beta. No, it didn't. But yeah, we got some results testing these two, but now let's test it with ChatGPT. And as for Copilot versus Duet, I really think that Duet can help us as like it's really being a compiler and not just producing like creating every single line of code for us. It can help us just like try to remember how the structure of something is like um, so th those small things from TypeScript that you end up forgetting and you have to waste some time going to Google and just searching it. Now you have that for free on your VS code and and that's magnificent. It works for that purpose. And I really don't think that you should just use these these extensions, these compilers as a way to make them create the entire script for you. You have to have a good sense of what you're creating and how you're going to use these tools to just help you remember things and type some things faster, not really create the entire code. But let's compare that with ChatGPT. I just think that ChatGPT might perform way better than these two. And you shouldn't use that as a parameter of what is good and what is bad. I, I believe that the real way to measure this is actually using it and like just feeling how it helps you and, and how much value it actually provides to your day-to-day -day job. ChatGPT doesn't really help you structure the code. Like it, it should it shouldn't be making so much code. It should just help you with a specific code or like if you're sending your entire code over to ChatGPT, like maybe there's a problem, maybe you don't know that language so well and you should get more informed and use ChatGPT as a purpose of really learning how to design that entire code, not just letting it code for you. But I know that many people do that and especially entrepreneurs that really don't care about coding and they just want to get things done fast. And in those cases, like don't just don't don't care about what people are saying when you use ChatGPT to create your entire code. Just make money and just keep using it. Make money and and as soon as you do make money, just pay an actual programmer that likes programming to create it the correct way. I mean, there's absolutely no problem in doing that. So yeah, we don't need to erase this. Let's just send this over to ChatGPT. Um, please create me. Please create a TypeScript code that has a simple calculator in the terminal. The, no, that creates a simple, okay, this is it. Remembering, Duet AI got this very wrong, Copilot got this pretty right, and now we're going to test how ChatGPT goes. Okay, I already liked the way it typed things, like Copilot didn't do that. Okay, that's the entire code. Let's just replace this one with that. We got no error. Let's clear this out. Yes, node simple. Calc. Okay, let's add first number five, second number 15, 20. Okay, yes, I want to continue. Let's um, divide, I get, I don't know, with 52. Okay, yeah, it got it right at its first try. This was easy for ChatGPT. 4.0. Now let's go on to the scraper. Now create a code which is a scraper. Scrape a website a code. Let's specify that it's TypeScript. I just realized that I typed something wrong here. Like scrape a website at return. It's supposed to be and return the first paragraph. But okay, now it, it just instructed me to import these. So let's get out of this. Clear PNPM add these. Enter. 
Okay, let's grab this code while it's installing that and replace it with this. Now we can TS node scraper, right? Yeah, you got it got that wrong. But as I said, I really think this isn't a problem with the code itself and yes, a problem with my environment. So now let's see ChatGPT solve this lead code problem. I'm just gonna send it out, commented for it. Create this in TypeScript, please. Here's TypeScript's solution for creating the shortest palindrome by adding characters in front of a given string. And I really, like I, I've said this before, I really think that this is the easiest one for an AI to solve simply because you can find that all over the internet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I kinda, okay, clear, clear. Okay, TS node, TS node lead code dot TS. And yeah, that's, that's correct. I think this is the same code that, maybe not, actually not. I don't remember seeing these two variables right here from Copilot, but it's very similar to what Copilot created. Now let's try to create the chatbot. And the chatbot, I really doubt that it could create the chatbot, even ChatGPT. So I'm gonna try to help it by instructing it to browse the internet. Create a chatbot using an AI, it should use the new recent beta API. So browse for a similar code on how to solve that. And I'm even going to help it more because please build this using TypeScript. Okay, let's see how it goes. Doing search with Bing, searching open AI integration using beta API TypeScript example. I mean, if, if he doesn't get this right, even after browsing to create by using open AI API with TypeScript, you'll need to follow a series of steps to set up and integrate the necessary components. This tutorial will give you through like it seems to just after a quick search, like this quick search source right here, probably what you find here is what he will repeat. And it seems like, oh yeah, see like OpenAI beta threads create. If he gets that right, then probably, wow, he's instructing me how to use TypeScript. That's not really what I asked for. I just asked for the code. See, that that is actually what it's supposed to do. Actually instruct us on how to build things and not just build the entire code. But I mean, when you just want a code all done and he keeps lecturing you on how to create it, it's kind of annoying. And apparently it still got it wrong. I mean, probably because of the word beta, it just presumes that it's not relevant data. So that's it for this video. Let's make it make, uh, make create a image repairing TypeScript, chat GPT, and do it AI. Browse the internet to understand what each of them are. I hope you guys like this. Now it's just, I did a quick search and here's what I discovered. ChatGPT on the other hand is an AI language model. Okay, like, wow, see, oh, today he wants to lecture me. Wow, today he really wants to lecture me. Please create an image for that. Will it create the image or will it start lecturing me again? It seems to be creating the image. Richest bug. Okay, creating the image. Great. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was informative for you guys and that those of you who wanted to really compare these three really got a sense of how each one works and how you can apply them on your day to day work with coding. Um, this is the image that GT produced. It's just one is TypeScript, the other is Duet AI. I don't know why he persistently wrote TypeScript, but thanks for watching. If this was useful for you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Till then.